In this tutorial, we're going to go over all the variety of features in the fitting box. This tutorial is broken into five parts. The first part is going to teach you about new and continue and how to use this feature. Part two will be on how to change your hold points in Practicad. Part three will be how to change your in out points. Part four is going to teach you how to use the different routing methods in the fitting box. And part five will teach you how to use your save as default key. This tutorial can be watched in full or broken into segments. How to place down duct using new and continue. Practicat has an option in the fitting parameter box or item box called new and continue. It's located right here under my cursor. Currently it is set for new. When it's on new, we are allowed to grab a fitting from our bin and then place it anywhere on the drawing without attaching to any other entity. You will notice here I'm going to click on the drawing and place one piece of duct down. Now if I would like to attach another piece of duct to it, I can do so by bringing this button right over to the first duct line. When you see the endpoint node, that means that Practicat is now going to snap these two ducts together. It's very important to make sure that down at the bottom of the screen you have your object snaps on. 99% of the time they should always be turned on. If they're on you will notice that even if I shrink down a fitting and I bring it close to the other fitting it will resize to the fitting to match and then I could click to place another fitting down. But clicking on that node every time in a busy drawing can be time consuming. So MetaLab has added a feature that is called new and continue. To work on continue all you need to do is either switch to continue in your item box by clicking and when you do that you will notice that the duct automatically snaps on to the last piece. Now every time I click or every time I hit enter Practicat will add another piece of duct. When you're on continue you can work just by grabbing another fitting then clicking and then selecting one more fitting after that and it'll just continue to continue fitting after fitting. This is a very very fast way of drawing duct without having to zoom into the node. Now if you would like to create a new duct line you probably want to switch it back to new. So here I'm going to pick a piece of rectangular duct. I realize that I actually want to do a new duct line. This time instead of clicking new here I'm going to click N spacebar. Notice when you type N spacebar it instantly puts it in the command line. You do not need to click on the command line to put it there. Therefore, it's very, very fast to hit N spacebar. N for new, C for continue. I highly recommend that you get used to the keypad commands for this instead of using the fitting box. Otherwise, you'll have to come up to the fitting box every time. It does take more time. Now I've got it on new. I'm going to click and place this duck down. Once I'd like to move it to continue, notice the option is always there in my Practicat. It says continue, tap, or rotation. C, capital C for continue. If I hit C space bar, I can work on continue. So I can click three times for three pieces, and then I could hit N space bar for new, and then I could snap it to a new duck line. Once I've got one piece connected, I'm going to hit C space bar again for continue. This is a very quick way of drawing, and I highly recommend practicing using the N and C keypad commands. That concludes the tutorial on new and continue. There are also exercises on this section. How to change your hold points in Practicad. Practicad gives us the ability to hold our entities by a variety of hold points. To change the hold points we must go into the fitting parameter box and choose the proper options. Notice currently we are holding a piece of duct in isometric view therefore we can see the crosshairs are on the center center node of the duct. Take note that 99% of the time when we're drawing duct, we are holding it by the center center. However, if we would like to place this object down by a different hole point, for example, the bottom right corner, we can change our settings in the fitting parameter box. Notice here for Z, we've got center, bottom, and top. So for this tutorial, we're going to choose the bottom side of the duct. Now we're holding the duct by the bottom center you can see the crosshairs are right there. Then we can change the X parameters from left to right. Here we're going to switch the X to the right. So we're now holding the duct by the bottom right. 
Therefore, if we use an AutoCAD offset command, we can hold the duct by this corner point to place it exactly where we want it on the drawing. This makes it easy to get things positioned properly. How to switch your hold points from the in connection to the out connection. Practicad gives you the ability not only to change the various base points you hold your entities, but also from the different connections, in or out. Notice in the combo box we have the choice in for the in joint, out for the first out joint, like rectangular duct has one out, out two for fittings like square T's that have an out left and an out right, and out three for duct that has three openings like a three-way Y. By switching through the choices in the combo box, we can change the hold points that we use when we're placing down duct. In this tutorial, we're going to grab a piece of rectangular duct. Notice that we're holding that duct by the center, center, in. Therefore, my crosshairs are placed exactly there. If I would like to hold it by the center, center, out to place this down, I can switch it to out one. Now notice that the duct hasn't changed orientation. I am just holding it by a different point. It is important to understand that in Practicad, we always connect out joints to in joints and in joints to out joints. This maintains good duct line integrity, and there are many advanced tutorials on maintaining duct line integrity. In this tutorial, we're just going to show you how to control the different in and out points. Here, we're going to switch it back to in, and now I'm going to place the duct on the drawing. You can see that. I am now holding the next piece of ductwork by the in. So naturally, I would be able to snap this directly to this existing duct. You will always know if the connectivity is good because Practicad will usually resize the duct to fit. In joints can be made so that they do not attach to other in joints. This is an option, and there are tutorials on that option that we recommend check called duct line in out attachment. And there is the ability to check in out attachment as you draw. What check in out attachment means is that I would be unable currently to snap this duct to this joint because I'm holding the duct by the in and I'm trying to snap it to the in joint of another duct. Notice it doesn't resize. This is because I have this option checked. The tutorial for that will follow after this one. Once again, I'm holding the duct by the in and I'm now going to snap it to the out joint of this duct. If I would like to attach duct to this one before, what I should do is change my hold point to the out. Now I'll be able to bring duct work over and since I'm holding it by the out joint, it will easily snap to the in joint. This is very important to take a look at what you're holding whenever you're attaching duct work. That'll conclude this tutorial on in out. How to use the different routing methods inside Practicad. Practicad offers a variety of routing methods that we can toggle through while we're drawing our duct. The routing methods are listed in the fitting parameter box. You can see we have piece, exact, up, down, single, and smart. This tutorial is going to teach you how to use the different methods and how to toggle through them while you're drawing duct in other places on the drawing. To start, we're going to focus with the piece method. Piece method is one of the simplest methods we have. What it does, it allows you to draw duct piece by piece. We're going to come here, place one piece of duct on the drawing, and once I click, you can see that it only places one piece. If I hit C for continue, every mouse click I make will actually add one piece. You will notice that if I'm routing duct, I'm holding the crosshairs that the duct is not following or stretching because we can only do one piece at a time. However, we can switch from piece to different methods like exact or smart and route multiple pieces of duct on the drawing at once. Here we're going to grab a radius elbow and now we're going to switch it to exact. You can also hit E and the spacebar or enter key to switch it to the exact method. You could always see what letters or keypad commands trigger off what methods by looking in the command line. I'm going to place this duct on the drawing, and once I've chosen my rotation, notice that it says in the command line, new, piece, exact, up, down, single, smart, and exit. The capital letter indicates the keypad command for each routing method. 
I believe that keypad commands will speed up the drafting process, so I recommend them, but you can always switch it in your fitting parameter box, whichever you prefer. So if I want to switch it between exact or piece, I could hit P for piece, which routes out just one elbow, or E spacebar for exact. What exact will do is it'll route the duct all the way out to where my crosshair is, and I can pull down to route duct in this direction. Notice that PractiCAD has not extended the straights of this elbow. What it's doing is it's putting a variable length piece of duct right before the elbow. Exact uses full length pieces of duct and variable length pieces of duct to cover specific distances. However, you can switch it to a different method called SMART. To activate that method, I'm going to type in what it says in my command line here, M for SMART, spacebar, and you can see that it's been updated in the fitting parameter box. And now when we stretch, PractiCAD is going to extend the straights of the elbow so we now have a larger elbow and full length duct. It eliminates small joints. So usually while you're drawing, you can toggle E spacebar for exact, get little joints, or if you feel you rather the straights extend, hit M spacebar for smart. The next routing method we're going to go over is up and down. These two methods are almost identical. I'm going to toggle through by typing U spacebar so that we've got it on the up method. Up basically rounds up to the nearest joint. Notice that the crosshair, the second it gets past the connector out, PractiCAD puts a joint. It rounds up to the nearest joint. Down, or D spacebar for down, does the exact opposite. Down doesn't put a joint until the crosshair is at least a full length joint away from the last connection because it's rounding down joints. So once I get past about 60 inches here, it'll add a joint. It rounds down joints as opposed to U spacebar routing up. I usually just use the up routing method, but we do offer both. The last method is the single method, and there are multiple tutorials on the single method. Generally, single is for connecting duct between two points. It puts one large fitting in between two connection points. For example, here we're going to erase this duct. I could grab a transition or any fitting that would fit, snap to one side, type in I spacebar for single, notice it's updated the fitting parameter box, and then hold to my next point and it'll snap and attach. This will not work, of course, if you don't have your AutoCAD object snaps on. You can see currently that it says the endpoint node is lit, and that's because my O snaps are on and make sure you go through the tutorials on controlling your O snaps but single is used to attach one large fitting or small fitting between two pieces of duct. That'll conclude the tutorial on your routing methods in the fitting parameter box. How to use your save as default key in the fitting parameter box. When you go to grab a fitting and this tutorial will grab a finish length transition if you decide you would like the parameters of that fitting to start with specific values, you could type in whatever you want. Here we're going to type in length 24 and then hit the save as default key. When you do this, every time you go back to that transition, the transition will have the exact same parameters as we just saved it. So we come back up to the fitting bin, we click on finish length transition, and here you can see it's been saved as a default with length 24. Now this will work with the exception of catalog fittings. If you catalog the fitting or created a custom fitting, and you can always tell which ones you've done because they're marked with little icons. For example, I have a custom spiral duct fitting that I've created. If I click on this fitting, you will notice that it's saved with diameter as 36, but I cannot use the save as default key here. If I would like to save this fitting's default diameter into 20, I'd have to go into the library and change it. So I'm going to go into the library icon in my PractiCAD ribbon bar, 
And then what we're going to do is go to the round straight spiral where I've created that custom fitting. And here you can see it's called spiral duct. And the diameter is 36. If I would like it to start with 24 inches, I can change it here. Once I've done that, I'm going to hit the save key and exit out. Now, when I go to the fitting parameter box, the spiral will be at 24. That's the only way to change the default if it's a catalog entity. That concludes the tutorial on save as default.